Hello. Let's talk about knife sharpening. It's a rather important subject, I think. If you have a knife, uh, whether or not you like it, someday it will get dull, sooner or later. It doesn't matter if your knife is a cheap thing from the pound shop or it's a £2,000 Japanese knife with the latest super steel. The fact still remains, someday your knife will get dull and you will have to sharpen it and if you do not sharpen it, well it won't cut and it will become dangerous because you will have to apply a lot more pressure onto the knife. Now I'm not going to get into that, I've already done a video on it. But I'm just going to go over some of the equipment that you could use to sharpen a knife because there are quite a few options out there and I use various methods to sharpen my knives. So here are the ones that I use and I will also mention other ones. So the one that kind of jumps out right now, this big green thing, this is called a sharpening stone. This particular one is a Japanese water stone, meaning it has to be submerged in water for about 10 minutes before use and you have to keep the surface of the stone wet. You use this, this product is used by basically running the edge of the knife along the stone, keeping a consistent angle. And I'll just show you what I mean. You run this knife along the stone like this for a certain number of passes until the knife has a burr, which is just a thin piece of metal on the edge of the knife. And then you would do it the opposite side. Now this is a 2000 grit whetstone. Depending on how dull your knife is, depending on what grit you start, what grit you start with. I have four different grits myself: 220, 1000, 2000, and 5000. Depending on how dull your knife is, depending on which stone you start off with. So if your knife is very dull, you would start off with the most coarse stone. In my case, the most coarse stone that I own is 220. After the 220, I would obviously go to 1000, 2000, and to the 5000. But of course, you use any stone in between, and it's up to you to determine how sharp you want it, your knife to be. Um, it doesn't always have to be a razor sharp, mirror polished edge. Although, personally, that's how I like most of my knives to be. Now, while we're on the subject of water stones, there are other kinds of stones. Um, the other kind that I have um, is, this is called an oil stone. It's very similar to the water stone, except you use oil on these stones. I'm not entirely sure what the difference is, but from what I understand, a oil stone is a lot harder than an, than a water stone. Now with a water stone, you don't want to put oil on it. Um, honing oil, that is. You don't want to put oil on these stones from what I understand because it could ruin it. I don't really know how, but I just know it does. With an oil stone, I believe it is okay to put water or oil on it. And I think most kinds of oil will work. Now there are a couple other kinds of stones. Now don't worry, this video is not just about stones. But there are a couple other kinds of stones. There is ceramic stones and there are diamond plated stones, or diamond plates rather. The diamond plate is a piece of steel with uh, man-made diamonds bonded to the surface. I have no experience with these kinds of stones, so I'm not gonna speak about them. Ceramic stones is just this is the same thing as this made of ceramic. I don't know what the difference is. I think the ceramic stones are more expensive and I believe the most expensive kind of stones out of the four is the diamond stone. Oil stones are probably the cheapest, but because they use oil, they are very messy. And if you're using or sharpening a tool or knife with a wooden handle, you really don't want to get the oil on it. So I believe the cleanest option is a diamond stone. And diamond stones, from what I understand, don't need any maintenance. With a wet stone, they need maintenance because as you pass the knife back and forth over the stone, it does remove material from the stone and you could end up with a concave, yeah, concaving in the stone which gives the stone a bit of a dip and that could put a convex on your knife or your chisel which you probably don't want. So to counter this you have to dress the stone. So this is a dressing stone. 
with both of these wet, you just rub this on the surface and that cleans the stone. Although you will eventually need a bigger dressing stone to completely flatten it out. This could also be achieved by using a piece of wet and dry sandpaper on a perfectly flat surface such as a tile. Now, I must say I'm not an expert on the subject, I'm still learning. I have learned quite a lot recently but I just like to share my knowledge from what I understand so far. I believe all of this to be factually correct. Anyway, moving on. A couple other um, methods of sharpening. No, actually, you know what? I should talk about stropping next. After you've stropped, sorry, after you've honed your knife on the finest grit of your stone, in my case, this would be 5,000, you would then go on to a leather strop. Now, what a leather strop is, is just a piece of leather glued to a piece of wood, or this kind is anyway. It's a piece of leather glued to a piece of wood with buffing compound. This refines the edge and gives it a mirror polish and removes the burr. The burr, if you leave it on the knife, will stop it being as sharp as it could be, which is not a good thing. Use, you use a strop very similarly as a stone, except you only go in one direction. Otherwise, you'll gouge or cut the leather. And this puts a mirror polish on your blade. There are a couple other different kind of strops. These two I've made myself, both uh, the block strop and this small paddle strop. It's the exact same thing. But the most commonly known is a belt strop like is used for sharpening straight razors. You could also use a leather belt that you use to hold up your jeans. Any piece of leather really can be used as a strop. This is a honing steel. Uh, I don't know too much about these. Uh, I believe there are well, a few different kinds. Uh, this one is steel. I believe you also get these in ceramic and you do get them in diamond as well. This is quite a fine one. I only own one of these. These are the kind of things you see the, bo the butchers and chefs using. And this is more for maintenance. Like the stones, it does take a bit of time to work out how to use this and to acquire the skills. But it's definitely worthwhile getting into because you can use this to maintain the edge on your knife instead of repeatedly going back to the stone. That actually applies to the strop as well. You want to have to use your stones uh, as... Well, you don't want to use them a lot. Because, it, like I said, every time you use it, it does wear down the stone. And bearing in mind, when using any method of sharpening, what you're doing when you're sharpening a knife or a tool is you're removing steel. So that knife is gradually, over a long period of time, getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Which is why if you see a very old knife, it looks like a lot of the blade is gone. Because it's been ground off by the sharpening equipment. For this reason, I prefer to stay away from any kind of... Um, well, that's why you don't want to put your tool on a bench grinder, because a bench grinder will remove steel very, very quickly. And it's not ideal for sharpening anyway. Now, here's another one. This is kind of a ceramic rod. This one is Victorinox. Now, this has two pieces to it. So I'm going to talk about that. Now, before I go into this rod section, this is kind of a tip for the beginners. This is a pull through sharpener. A lot of people have some form of pull through sharpener. And there's just two stones in there. In this case, it's ceramic. How this works is you place the knife inside and you pull it back. And this is supposed to give the knife a sharp edge. The problem with this is this is only set at one angle and you can't change it and most knives have different angles. So this isn't really suitable. This destroys the edge of a knife. Anyone who knows what they're talking about when it comes to knife sharpeners will tell you to avoid these. Any kind of pull through sharpeners 
just destroy knives. These are terrible. Do not use these. Now, this is ceramic and it works very similarly to the sharpening steel or the honing steel. I actually find that this works very well for giving a very good edge to the Swiss Army knives. That makes sense because this is made by Victorinox, the makers of the Swiss Army knife. But you could use this on any knife. Although obviously it is made for smaller knives as this is only about 5 inches long. This is a combo sharpener, this is a landscape. These two, as you can see, and, I, and as I've explained, are pull-through sharpeners. Just avoid those. I got this sharpener in a combo deal with the Landscape World Legal Pocket Knife. But this does have a tool on it that I will use. And that is this diamond file. Again, just like the, the honing steel and the ceramic rod. This is good for maintenance. It also has this ceramic piece here which says it's for serrations, but I honestly don't have a clue how to use that, so I'm not going to talk about it. Now, for very dull knives, or uh, longer dull knives I should say, and axes, you would use a metal working file. I don't think it really makes a difference which one you use. This is just the kind that I use. This is just a cheap one, probably from the pound shop actually. But it does the job, and this is how I keep my axes and uh, some longer knives sharp. The last thing I want to cover is sharpening systems. This is a Lansky set. Personally, I don't think that much of these. I prefer to freehand sharpen. These cost about £50, and they come with a very small selection of stones. So we have a coarse a medium and a fine and this one here is for doing serrated blades and I honestly can't work out how to use it. This is a guide in which you hold this piece, you use one of these rods to, one of these rods sorry, to attach the stone into one of these four slots for the angle and you would use these stones to sharpen and hone your knife blade using this hone oil. These are oil stones. Now, a lot of people seem to absolutely love these. Personally, I don't think that much of it is a preference thing. I prefer to freehand it the old fashioned way using an, a whetstone. Now, there are much, much more expensive sharpening systems. Some people pay upwards of £800 for a Wicked Edge or an Apex or whatever you call them. I have no experience with those so I can't really comment but £800 to sharpen blades is a bit much in my opinion. I mean unless you've got a lot of knives, a lot of expensive knives, then I suppose I could understand that you know if you're paying two, £300 a knife, yeah I suppose that makes sense. But, oh, oh yeah, there's also um, electric sharpeners, I can't remember, oh yeah, work sharps, work sharps, which is uh, basically just a belt sander, but it's built for sharpening knives and it has various angles. Those can cost a bit of money as well, I believe those cost upwards of £150. Now that said, a good Japanese set of whetstones will also cost, will, uh, cost you around that amount as well. Although you can get cheap stones, this is a double sided wet stone, 2,600 grit, you can get these for around £20 off Amazon. Well thank you for watching, uh, I do intend at some point on doing videos on actually using some of this equipment, uh, especially the Japanese water stones and the leather straps so if you're interested stick around and uh, hopefully at some point i'll have a video of that up so again thank you for watching and goodbye